The one consistency within the My Hero Academia universe is that every character, whether they be a hero like All Might or a villain like Shigaraki, has a tragic anime backstory, and I'm happy to see that All For Ones will not be skipped. Yo everybody, it's your boy King of Chaos, here to bring you My Hero Academia Chapter 408. If you love My Hero Academia and you appreciate the content, be sure to drop a like and subscribe. We got a lot more content on the channel and I can't wait to cover more with all of you. We open up the chapter and we get information on how Yoichi got his name. It turns out All For One played more of an integral role in his life than we had first assumed. It was always presumed that All For One basically took on the role of caregiver for Yoichi, given his small frame and stature. But I never knew that he was the one who gave him his name. It's crazy. All For One genuinely considered his brother um, a pet, almost. It's a warped sense of love, but in a sense, he considers it his love. As we get later on in the chapter, you're going to see more cases of this. So trust me, as much as this guy likes to act like he's some symbol of terror at all, I really think he's just a scared little boy who wants a little bit extra love. Come back to the chapter. Two months have passed since the last chapter we had, and Yorichi has escaped from All For One. He's ditched him as his brother said. <laughs> Uh, he walked out on him. A very interesting terminology for someone like All For One who's not really one for letting one <laughs> walk anywhere. After slaughtering numerous heroes, he eventually makes his way to the second user of the second user of One For All. We also get a look at Kudo and his first interpretation of what All For One is as an entity. He describes his eyes as milky, cloudy, uh, without a membrane. You saw no reflection in them, almost like he's soulless. It's hinted that a battle takes place here, but fortunately Kudo was able to escape from this. Unfortunately, All For One was able to get his hand somewhat on Yorichi, or at least his body. We get back into the chapter and we see him holding someone's hand, thinking to himself that the meta ability he granted him is gone. We're presuming here that this is Yorichi, and All For One's observing that he's dead now, and he doesn't have a quirk, and he finds that strange. So it turns out this wasn't something that he would, could have predicted would have happened. He wasn't anticipating his brother being able to pass on the quirk to someone upon his death. Ironic given his name, Yoichi has the kanji characters for bestow and one. So, I mean, it, it, it's pretty much a giveaway there. It's almost like you walked yourself into that all for one. <laughs> then we cut back and all for one's discussing with himself at whether or not he's stolen Yoichi's original power. He thought to himself that, hey, I must have taken it while we were in the womb. He doubles down by saying, no, it couldn't have been him because he was able to see within Yoichi, uh, <laughs> I guess by, I don't know, touching him. I don't know how his power works, but it's a little bit sus to think he's touching his brother. But his original quirk, the one for all that he bestowed upon him, didn't register in Yorichi's mutation or whatever it is. Whatever happened within his body, maybe it had to do with the chemicals being made up when he was first being born as some of the oldest quirk um, havers originally. But he says that something within there gave him the ability to transfer it, maybe with some type of weird mutation. It would make sense given that all for one is able to transfer quirks and they are siblings from the same batch, essentially twins. It makes perfect sense to me at least that he'd be able to pass it on. Maybe it's like a, a remnant of a quirk, kind of how like Endeavor's kids all have some version of fire or ice because of his parents. It would make sense that siblings share somewhat similar quirks cut back and we see Kudo discussing with some man in his uh, in his office. I, he's looking to me either like another user of one for all or he could be Wade from Kim Possible. Anyways, uh, he's talking to him. He's saying, hey, I've observed your body and it's confirmed. You have two quirks in you. Prior to that, he had asked if All For One had gotten a chance to touch him. And he said, no, I'm solid. And it's strange. So they all knew early on about All For One's abilities, but they weren't able to get a hand on him. That's a little bit crazy. Think about it. If you were to take All For One and consider him a bank, he would have what we would call compound interest because of the long time he's been able to stockpile quirks. If you beat him early on, he's going to be a lot easier than he would be if you go wait until he has a thousand quirks on him. But hey, whatever. Somehow, Yoichi was able to transfer his quirk to Kudo. And Kudo's now observing that, realizing, hey, I got two quirks within me. We cut back and we find out that All For One ascertains that Yoichi's innate quirk that wasn't even registering must have modified his quirk that he gave him, uh, all for, sorry, one for all, and then modified it to make up for what he had lacked and lost in the womb. In a sense, he thinks he stole it. The irony of that from All For One. He's also observing the abnormalness within uh, One For All. You know, why is it that it feels like Yoroichi and both of them, Kudo and All For One, it's weird, they hate each other, but like they both cared about Yoichi in their own twisted ways. Well, less so for Kudo. But he continues on by saying it feels like essentially he's still within me, his will lives on. It's a shame though, because Yoichi mentions in the last film we get a chance to see of him and that the ability to give and take quirks would have been the most beneficial thing to society. Think about it. Let's say you're someone who's a, a rock man or a hammer dude. You can have your body changed now and you're now just a regular person. Let's say you're someone who needs a quirk that allows you to breathe oxygen. Something basic, because keep in mind, quirks have a bunch of different ranges of possibilities. They're not limited to just who's blowing up what mountain. The point is, All For One's a bastard, and he's always known he is. He even said himself his crocodile tears were used to cause confusion and dismay. I had manipulated, corrupted everything I coveted and everything I loathed to make it all my own. 
Yet now we're seeing that hurt within him. I mean, despite what he's saying about crocodile tears, he's mentioning his brother and how, hey, I just want you to behave how I want. I want to make you mine. So I keep pursuing you and pursuing you, but you keep eluding me. Maybe that's the true reason his, for his obsession with the court. Maybe he really just wants his bro back. Think about it. At this point, he doesn't even need one for all. He's able to essentially reincarnate himself through Shigaraki. He has a way more quirks and versatility, much more experience and longevity. He has no reason to pursue it. He's hunting and he's pursuing because what? He wants his brother. He, it's all about control. Again, a warped sense of what he perceives to be love. All for one's just a monster. He, you know, he, he never got proper teachings of love. So clearly to him, this is the best way of showing it. Him wanting you, him wanting you to be controlled by him is his love and it's twisted. Yet for some reason, you always slip through my grasp. I love the panel there with All Might. We get to see how he lost a good chunk of his head. I always wonder why he looked like, I mean, what that was. If it was like a mask or something. It's just scar tissue. He got beat. All Might really put his head on the on the side of a wall there. Look at that punch. Cut back to the chapter. You got him screaming at the top of his lungs. You're to blame for it all, Kudo. Everything is your fault. And now this boy, this boy who clearly isn't even related to you, somehow everything about him is reminding me of you. All for one ended his entire bloodline. Kudo's whole family got smoked because of what he did. And not only that, he got rid of every woman and child he used to be close to. So if somehow he was, blood was running through his veins, it, it, it'd be impossible. He would know. He even comments back to how he would have noticed it the first time he saw Bakugo in the flashback. And then it hits him. It's all about the eyes. Back then and there, for some weird reason, he didn't have the same eyes as Kudo. But now, now that he's been awakened, it just seems like he's got the same look with them. And all for one is terrified. He feels as though that his will has crossed between space and time. So then he gets to thinking, forcibly warping himself to Shigar, you know, warping Baku out of the way would be the quickest route. But all he's gonna do is swap places with this Shigaraki or All Might who are close. He also knows that, hey, I'm gonna have to pack up Tomura. You know, when I get there, it's gonna be a battle. He ain't going easy, he's already been resisting me. I must save all of my remaining strength to succeed in that transfer. At least that's what he was thinking. But then he says, F this and decides to go full Bon Kai, domain expansion, whatever you want to call this. Sorry, let me call it its proper name. Omni Factor Unleashed, all for one goal. Oh my God, all for one goal. That's crazy. So this whole time he really has been just headhunting his brother. Jeez, and I thought my wife loved me. I mean, shoot, look at this pursuit. And even Yoichi feels with himself. He's like, hey, here he comes. He's warning Deku. And then he says, I will pass. No Gandalf the Grey. And then you got All Might and everyone watching around saying, Dodge, kid, you got to get out of the way. You, you don't stand a chance against this. And looking at it, Bakugo's just there. I mean, I don't, I don't know what he's going to do. He's creating a massive energy surge to help his propulsion. He's going to blast straight through Bakugo, probably through Deku, most of their bodies to get that Shigaraki pack he's been trying to smoke. Last panel of the chapter, we have Bakugo saying, some genius I am. How could I ever hope to beat that? So yeah, that's the chapter. I got to say, solid one. Kind of good to be back and where we're going. The the backdrop, the story, got to give it a good solid 9 out of 10. What do y'all think? Let me know in the comment section what's happening here. What do you think about my theory that this is all for brotherly love? Be sure to drop a like, by the way. These videos take a lot of time to do, edit, and I really appreciate them. Thanks for watching and take care.